How is it going, YouTube? Malikans here. We are going to be looking into Lower Kira's farm, and right off the bat, I should probably mention that like this works in offline. In online, I wouldn't bother with this. It's way too inefficient. In offline, it is efficient because you get to save your seed, your layout, the map, right? So like when you find a good one, which is the most important part of this farm, uh, you you can you can get to reset it time and time again and farm the same map in offline mode. So you want to be offline for this. Another reason that you want to be offline for this is the player's command. Uh, the player's command is capable of like scaling the amount of loot that you're going to be getting from the super chests that we're going to be hitting. And that is what we are hitting to begin with. So the players 8 or 7 is what you want to be farming for this in the lower cuirass. Because I, I, I believe there's no difference. The magic find definitely doesn't work for this. Uh, you just you just scale it with player's command and you hit the 6 super chests in lower, lower cuirass and, and get out pretty much. So before I jump into the uh, explanation of pretty much everything that I've experienced the past like 7 to 8 days farming farming my items which also the runes are on your screen right now. You can see the runes that I found. Those are the highest runes that I found uh, and the amount. Uh, the lower runes, I found so many of them, but I didn't really like, you know, want to put everything on the screen. Uh, I farmed about like close to 40 hours, I think, on stream. Uh, off stream, none. I just played on stream. And, um, you know, in 40 hours, I managed to craft a Heart of the Oak and Enigma. And also I have a Call to Arms, which is, which is a godlike role, actually. Uh, pretty lucky there. So that said, before jumping jumping into it, I should say that like I learned a lot from Mr. Lama's video, and I watched it about like three, four times during my farms. Just whenever, whenever I had doubt about something, you know, anything, there was a, like a question popping up on the stream just to be able to like answer it. I was turning back to his video, so I'm going to be linking the video down below and recommending you to check it out as well. It's a short video actually, and it gives a lot of information about how to do this. And I'll try to give a little bit more information and also cover it on uh, Diablo 2, to Diablo 2 Resurrected. So that said, uh, before farming a seed, I'll actually show you my seed because we already have a good seed here. Uh, and then afterwards, I'll show you how to farm a seed as well. So what you're searching for um, is in lower cuirass, you know, during during your seed farm, during, you know, trying to like finding find out uh, a, a good layout for yourself, a good map for yourself, you'll be searching for this type of house right there on my cursor. Or that one works as well, because like both houses, this one has two, this, was an, this one has one chest in it. And they're always looking the same in the um, overlay map, let's say. There, there's no other house looking like this. The same can be said for this one. And they're always connected by a bonfire right over there on my cursor. So if we teleport over here, <clears throat> as you can see, there's the bonfire, the campfire. On the left of the campfire, there'll always be two super chests. One of these, this one. The other one is that one. On the right of the campfire, there'll be always a single super chest it is this one and it's always the same uh, structure with everything so what you're trying to find is actually a bonfire a campfire that is like close to um the waypoint of the lower, lower cuirass right but that's not enough because that can be two campfires so to min max it you actually want to find two campfires that are close to the uh uh, the waypoints of the lower cuirass then you have a good seed in your hands so in this case we do because like if you pay attention this right over here is the same as this so there should be like a campfire right next to it too so back to back two campfires with you know three chests two on the left one on the right side of the campfire right there we already got a hal rune from this one i can tp to the right and open this and then at this point you can log out um if you're playing a slow character you could also teleport back to town uh go to act four i believe and then log out over here instead because this is going to be giving you a much faster access to lower curas when you start the game as a paladin i should actually mention this as a paladin you get you get you know access to vigor inside the town as well your movement speed is crazy so i didn't do this log out thingy eh? i didn't come to act four to log out i was i was fine with running um we can we can show that as well i was fine with running in act three when i opened my games because like after opening the sixth super chest right you log out and then you start your game once again in hell and now i'm going to be in act three and i'll have to like run all the way to the waypoints right but thanks to vigor it is not too bad but if you're playing a sorceress which is the best 
to do this because you don't necessarily need an extra item to be able to teleport infinitely. Now, to do this fast, a sorceress, you know, consider if you're going to be playing this, if you're going to be farming lower cuirass for about like 30 to 40 hours, which is usually what it takes if you're doing it right to get like yourself an enigma and maybe even a couple more items. Um, I would suggest you, I, I would suggest for you to like get a, get a sorceress. Uh, that is somewhat good geared, okay -ish geared, to be able to like, you know, survive a hit or two if you like teleporting a wrong zone or in the middle of monsters. What you do is just, you teleport in, right? You TP to the first chest, second chest, third one, and now you go to the next house. One, two, three. This is the moment that I was logging out after checking my loot, right? So it is an incredibly fast, uh, incredibly fast farm. And then rinse and repeat all the time until until finding runes. And it takes about like 40 hours, as I mentioned, to get to an enigma and maybe an item. Maybe another item. I've gotten two, actually, call to arms and hold on. A sorceress is better doing this because she has access to teleports infinitely. But where my pal then, before the enigma especially, I had to run a staff, a secondary staff next to it. It wasn't necessarily the best way, but... Since I was running a pal, then I didn't mind running in Act 3. So if you're running a sorceress, you should probably teleport out and go to... Uh, like, before exiting the game, you should probably teleport out and then go to Act 4 and then log out over there because right next to your login, you will have a waypoint to go to lower grass once again. That is definitely faster for you, especially if your loading screens are faster. So, that out of the way, guys. Let's reset my layouts over here and try to find try to find a good good seed again i mean maybe i'm not going to be able to find it because it can actually like take up to an hour to find a good seed sometimes it also depends on like what your expectations are but what you need to do in offline is is that if you change the difficulty that you were in now we're in a nightmare now my you know my 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 layouts my seeds they completely reset so back going back to hell which is where we're gonna like try to find the lower cuirass obviously uh, now my lower cuirass is completely reset. So we don't necessarily need to be in higher players because we are searching for a good map here. I come here. Right next to the main waypoint, I check for a good... This could be a good one already. This is incredibly lucky because this, this house, if you remember, this is one of them. So there will be a campfire over here. So what I'm searching for, like we already have three chests now close to us. What I'm searching for is like yet another one next to this. So the second campfire, that is what I need, right? And you kind of want it to be right next to it because because of efficiency you'll be doing this a thousand times if you're up for it so that's what you're searching for if there is none on the right side over here we're, we're gonna log out and we're gonna reset one more time and you keep on doing this until you find two campfires close to your waypoint couple of questions that i received during the stream while i was streaming this you know how are you doing this <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you going mad I actually enjoyed it a lot because um, it's pretty chill and repetitive content. That's kind of kind of the thing that I'm searching for on on stream. So it was kind of funny. It was always um, it was like a build up to the high rune. So uh, I think you've already probably seen the video on my YouTube uh, when I found the bear rune. I only found one. That is the you know absolute highest drop that you can get. You can get a bear rune. You can get uh, sir runes from this. Obviously low runes, but higher than bear. So a jar you cannot find it from here. Um, but bear is obviously like incredibly rare and, and very valuable already so uh, very very good another question was um, you know can I do this in online you can maybe join people's games as I like farming you know eight people bail but again you won't have a good layout so you'll need to like search for the campfire to open the chest and this takes about like what like three minutes or something you know I am I'm hitting uh, about let's say um 6 12 36 if i'm if i'm playing optimally i think i'm hitting about like 12 chests in three minutes so no so, sorry 36 chests in in three minutes so like there's a vast difference massive difference i wouldn't bother with this it's probably better to like farm something like trivinkel uh council or you know some other bosses in online definitely this this is not the way to go for um what else what else magic find how, how you know how much magic find were you running 
it doesn't matter if you're just hitting if you're not killing anything on players eight like me and if you're just hitting the super chest the magic find doesn't affect the the super chest they have like if i'm not mistaken set drops like sixty-five thousand or, or something what that means is that like they will be they'll be dropping the same looking the same combination of you know there are sixty-five thousands of combinations of uh, drop from the table and they'll be dropping one of them each time and the reason that we're scaling it to players 8 is going to be, you know, dropping more of these, basically. More combinations. And at the end of the day, the magic find cannot affect this. And this is some sort of, like, a unique way. If I'm not mistaken, there's no way to check out, like, your chances uh, from maxroll.gg either. I couldn't figure it out. If you actually can figure it out, I would like to know in the comment section, like, help me out. I would like to know our chances of getting a Sir Rune from player 7 or 8. Uh, in this lower lower Kira's farming, I would like to know definitely. But there has been, you know, we, we talked about this on stream as well. There has been some speculations, but I didn't get convinced. So uh, take that as you will. I, like, I, I don't think it was like the truth. People were saying, you know, getting a bear rune is, you know, one in a 65,000. But is that like in players one? Is it on players eight? You know, like it's it's because most of the data is not necessarily mind it is it is just like player crafted they're keeping their you know runs under um it's under track right and then uh just publishing it on forums and stuff and people are you know going going for 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 you know drop rates and stuff just judging from from that information basically judging that information so that said um magic find doesn't necessarily do anything for you obviously if if you are not necessarily hitting like other small chests and corpses and like killing monsters around the way i was i was sort of like you know clicking some weapon racks some small chests and sometimes even some corpses it kind of depends on the seed i didn't necessarily want to like say you know there's a weapon rack over here every time so for instance if you think about the campfire right and i said on the right side there's one chest there's always a weapon rack inside that one uh if you would like to open it so when you have a good seed, you will have access to two weapon racks. There's actually an armor rack as well outside, but that kind of depends if you if you want to like hit that point. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, because it kind of depends on like the layouts, um, uh, how, how it is positioned basically. Like for me, I resetted my layouts, my seeds, a couple of times. Sometimes, mostly by mistake, actually, by just like entering nightmare, spacing out, you know, farming six hours a day. <laughs> sometimes I click nightmare by mistake. It was it was a bad moment, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I ended up finding another seed each and every single time. And 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 sometimes it was okay for me to like hit, you know, click that single armor rack or click the chest, uh, a normal chest that's spawning to the left or like a corpse that's always at the bottom of the. Um, uh, of the campfire when you when you're farming this you will you will see what i'm talking about and if your if your you know route is taking that kind of like a way then you can you can definitely uh click these things but i wouldn't really worry about you know clicking any of these things too much except checking the super chests we can also talk about what kind of loot you're searching for from the super chest what are you supposed to be looting because it's very easy to recognize the rune rune drops so you can like go extremely fast right that's that is exactly what i did from the beginning of my stream like eight days ago but i started getting a lot of comments yo you're skipping this you're you're not looting that oh that is left behind on the floor the most important drops that you need to be searching for flawless amethyst is in my opinion incredibly valuable in this game i'll pick up like almost every single flawless uh flawless gem um, up until the point where you have like a mule character that is capable of, you know, holding or, or not capable of, but like ho already holding some perfect gems, right? But Amethyst is, in my opinion, the most valuable one. I would not stop looting it. You know, I would stop looting the others after I have like, let's say, eight, ten perfects of each. But Amethyst, I would continue looting it forever. So Flawless Amethyst, and this is the hardest one to see. I would not blame you because it is white. I would not blame you when there's like a big loot explosion to just like never mind the white drops. Just look at the blues and move on with obviously rune, runes as well. But runes are like orange, so it's impossible to miss. Um, another thing is that like about looking at the loot is that sometimes there's so much loot on your screen, especially in the left house where there's like two, uh, two chests. 
sometimes there's so much loot that like it is possible that the loot splashes outside so be mindful of that you can actually like miss some loot behind and it's the, the loot doesn't necessarily enter your screen it's like off screen you're gonna need to like path a little bit to be able to like loot some gold and perhaps you know fit the loot back into your screen this happens in path of exile quite a bit as well uh, it used to at least when i was playing quite a bit now another thing is um what do you loot from the blue from the rare items you loot, loot the small charms but more importantly i would say small charms is kind of whatever but you could definitely get something extremely good out of them which is like you know seven percent magic fine plus another fx which would be incredibly good honestly uh you're you're looking for grand charms because the grand charms that are capable of dropping from hell super chests and lower casts are also capable of giving you pluses to skills or uh, masteries basically and that is that is incredibly big obviously so grand charms never skip i've taken so much heat on my stream because of this another grand charm left on the floor mala what are you doing and stuff like that when you're trying to go incredibly fast i wasn't even looking at the blues but later on i realized this was a this was a big mistake honestly because every single grand charm you know no matter how hard it is to like get something good they could actually be incredibly good um so it was it was definitely a mistake to like skip them so definitely look at the blue the magic drops and and pick up like the charms not the large charms i didn't bother with the large charms if you would like you can but they're not necessarily that efficient when it comes to like the spacing i think they don't offer so much grand charms definitely the highest value followed by small charms uh i was picking up some potions every now and then not necessarily try harding um Apart from that, I think I didn't necessarily pick up anything except some rare items dropping. You could you could end up finding some upgrades from this one, actually. Um, rare items, what I was picking up is like, I was picking up helms, uh, I was picking up boots, I was picking up some gloves, I was picking up belts, rings, you know, accessory, like belts, rings and amulets. I was picking them up. The weapons, the shields, I didn't really necessarily like bother with them. About the loot, last thing that I'm going to cover is that if you end up finding... You know, there, there could be some mis of, misinformation about the stuff that I'm going to say. I'm not necessarily that good or like that uh, familiar with the game yet, but from, from the information that I've gathered so far... Um, you know, they, they don't take it as, as, as like 100% facts here. The way that you approach to the racks, such as like armor or weapon racks, uh, it determines the way it determines the loot okay so this is something that is like very interesting and something that i didn't necessarily believe at the beginning but after trying it out you know a couple of times I, I i understood it is actually that way i think so so there was one instance where i was able to actually like farm i'm trying to remember the name of the chest maybe 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 we can find one in my in my stash but it wasn't a dusk shroud it was one of the higher bases a good base actually uh this is not it oh yeah it is this one because as you can see i have a lot of them bone weave so bone weave was the one that i was farming guys i ended up finding a but uh, i ended up finding a armor finding an armor rack that was capable of giving a bone weave every time you were approaching from the left hand side so I farmed that one every single time as well. I was trying to farm, obviously, a bone weave that is ethereal, perhaps also superior, but it doesn't matter so much. And then I um, I was searching for like a three socket ethereal one, which I actually ended up finding unless I put it in my... Yeah, I think I put it on my meal, maybe. No, I didn't. It's right here. As you can see, this is the one that I found. Uh, ethereal three sockets bone weave. Incredibly, incredibly good, obviously, for a mercenary. Uh, for a treasury craft so this is so, sort of like the thing that you're farming for so if you end up like finding what i'm gonna uh say is that if you end up find, finding a weapon rack or a armor rack that is capable of dropping a good base you have the same layout layout every single time if you if you find out which approach you know it was to like drop that base you could actually drop the same base every single time until you perhaps find the right amount of sockets or an ethereal version or a superior version or maybe even a unique so if if like let's say if it's a shako that is dropping from the armor uh armor rack then you could go until you have the unique shako right and 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 there might be some small misinformation about the stuff that i just mentioned about the uh, base farming in this in this route but as i said like 
<laughs> I'm sure you guys are going to be correcting me in the descriptions below, uh, in, the, in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the video was useful. And if I haven't covered anything, or if you if you still have any questions about this farm, please feel free to like, comment down below, and I'll try to answer. Uh, that out of the way, please subscribe and like the video. It helps me and my channel grow quite a bit. Peace out, guys. Take care.